If you follow my channel, you know that lately I've been doing a little series of videos dealing with what I consider to be the best concealed carry guns in different categories. Now, up until now, I've been doing simple text and picture videos where I just basically put them in list format, something like you'd see on a blog, because I thought that worked best with what I was doing up until now, because basically those were semi-autos, and semi-autos are boring, they're blah, they don't really rate a lot of talking, but now we're gonna talk about the best carry revolvers. That is obviously a much more important and a much more interesting topic, so for this video, I'm actually gonna talk about these ones. So let's not waste a lot of time. Let's get right into the list. The first gun on the list in position number five is not gonna be a big surprise to anyone. It's one of the most popular concealed carry revolvers ever made, and it is the Smith & Wesson 637 38 Special Revolver. Now this is one of their lightweight alloy revolvers, and it's very small, so it's very easy to carry and conceal. It is five rounds of 38 Special, and 38 Special can be had anywhere from light cowboy loads for at the range, up to very potent plus P rounds for self-defense. A lot of people think of this little gun as a perfect backup gun, but as far as I'm concerned, it's an awesome everyday carry also. If you have this on your person, I think you're well defended. Now, I will put one little caveat to my number five position here. I have chosen the Smith & Wesson 637, but if you're more of a Ruger fan, substitute the Ruger LCRX in this position because I consider these guns pretty much equal. They both have slight differences, but the description of both guns is pretty much the same. They're both lightweight, small, easy to use, reliable little guns with good triggers, etc. So, whichever one you prefer. If you prefer Ruger, put the LCRX in this position. If you prefer Smith & Wesson, like I do, put the 637. And you can also get different variations of both of these guns. If you want this gun in a hammerless double action only, you can get the 642. If you want it with a shrouded hammer, you can get the 638. And the same thing with the uh, LCRX, you can get a double action only version of that also, which is the original version. And you can even get it in 357 Magnum. So there's a little versatility here too, but my choice is the 637. Now the gun in the number four position is the largest and the heaviest gun on the list, but it's still a great carry gun. And that gun is the Smith & Wesson model 66, two and a half inch. Now this gun, like I said, is a little bigger and a little heavier than the other guns on this list, but that's why it's at number four and not at number one. But it is an awesome carry gun. It is six rounds of 357 Magnum in a very carryable package. So you can't ask for much more than that when it comes to firepower. Now that extra size and weight does make it a little more manageable, makes it a little easier to shoot, a little less painful on the recoil than the small revolvers that are popular on the market today. But like I said, it does take a little effort to carry it, but it's worth it to carry a true classic. Now, if your taste lean a little more modern, you can substitute the 686 in this position, very similar gun, but I prefer the 66. I think it's a little easier to carry, a little smaller overall, so I actually prefer it as a carry gun. Now I think the four inch 686 is probably the best gun ever made, but when it comes to carry, the two and a half inch 66 is my choice for number four. Now the gun in the number three position tonight isn't gonna be a surprise to anyone either, especially not the people of my generation, because this gun is very much a part of our upbringing. This gun is the Smith & Wesson Model 60. Now this is an all stainless steel, small, easily concealable, 357 Magnum revolver. Like the 637, it is a five shot revolver, but this one is chambered for 357 Magnum, so it can shoot the 357s and also shoot the 38 specials. Now, since this gun is so small, it conceals easily, but it is a bit of a beast to shoot with full load 357 Magnums. It does hurt your hand. But, you know, in a self defense situation, that's going to be the least of your worries. And when you're at the range, you can shoot 38 special in it. Now, this gun is to my generation what the Glock is to today's generation. This is the gun that the cops had. Kojak had these, even Cagney and Lacey had these. The J-Frame was the gun that rode in the holster of almost every detective you saw on television. And when you add that to the fact that it's just an awesome gun, this gun deserves a place on almost any list you can think of when it comes to great guns. It's definitely on my list of favorite guns ever, and it's definitely one of the best carry guns ever made. Now the number two position gun is the first non-Smith & Wesson revolver to make the list, unless you have the LCRX on your list. But on my list, it's the first non-Smith & Wesson gun. Now this is a gun that might not be familiar to a lot of people out there, especially not if you're young enough and inexperienced enough to think that Glock is actually a perfect gun. But to those of us that have a little more experience in the gun world, we're probably gonna know this gun. And it is the Colt Magnum Carry. Now this gun takes the size and concealability of the Smith & Wesson J-Frame and puts on it the best trigger I think I've ever felt on a small revolver. And it gives you one more round. This is a true six shooter. This holds six rounds of 357 Magnum, or you can shoot 38 Special in it at the range. 
Now this gun is neither cheap nor easy to find, but this list isn't about the cheapest and easiest to find carry guns, it's about the best carry revolvers. So this gun is definitely number two on my list because it adds that extra round and that great trigger. That's the thing that puts it above the Smith & Wesson Model 60, those two things. Now if you can't find one of these, you probably have better luck finding one of its 38 special counterparts, the Colt Detective Special. Now this is a stainless steel Detective Special, they also come in blued, but these are much easier to find. Now this is the double action only hammerless model, but they come in regular double action, single action also. It's also six rounds, but it is just chambered for 38 Special, but you put some 38 Special plus P in here and you've got a very potent self-defense round. These guns also have something in common with the Smith & Wesson J-Frames other than just their size and their concealability. They also have a lot of cinema history. When you saw old Cagney movies or Bogey movies, these are the guns they usually had, the detective specials. So they have a lot of history behind them as well. So they're not just great, reliable, easily carried guns. They're also a little slice of Americana. So they definitely deserve that number two position on my list of all-time best carry revolvers. Now the gun in the number one position tonight, it's very different than every other gun on the list, but it borrows some common traits from a lot of the guns on the list. And this gun is the Chiappa Rhino 200DS 357 Magnum Revolver. Now this gun combines the full six round capacity of the heavier Smith & Wesson Model 66 and the far more expensive Colt Magnum carry with the more modern alloy technology of the 637 and the Ruger LCRX if you're a Ruger fan. It is a full six rounds of 357 Magnum for self-defense, and you can also shoot the 38 Specials at the range. And even though it is a little bit closer in size to the Smith & Wesson 66, it combines some unique elements like a flattened cylinder here that make it carry just as easily as the smaller guns. And since it also incorporates an alloy frame and barrel shroud, it's a lot lighter, a lot less noticeable on your hip than the all-steel guns. And even though this gun is lighter, it still shoots easier than any of those other guns, even the largest and heaviest of them. And it's because the cylinder is on the bottom. It shoots from the lower cylinder instead of the top cylinder, which gives you a much lower bore axis. And because of that difference, this gun will handle full load 357 Magnums like those other guns handle 38 Specials. It is a dream to shoot, even with self-defense ammo in it. Now, of the guns I chose for my list, this is by far the newest model. But it's been around long enough to prove itself, and I haven't seen any real problems with it, and more importantly, mine has been flawless. Now I know a lot of people are going to say, you can't possibly think that's the best carry revolver. It's just new and different, and you want to be different, so you're choosing it. But that couldn't be further from the truth. There are a lot of differences between this gun and the other guns on my list, but there's also one other difference you might notice. This gun is loaded, and it's loaded because I carry it every single day. So even though I own all those other revolvers on my list that I could easily carry, and I own a lot of other semi-autos that have higher capacity that I could carry, this is the gun I choose to carry. This is the gun I trust my life to every day. And even more importantly than that, I trust the lives of my children to this gun every day. And when it comes right down to it, what greater endorsement could I give a gun than that? So there you have it. There's my list of top five carry revolvers of all time, which is kind of like saying top five carry guns of all time, because we all know revolvers are best. Now, one thing you have to keep in mind about this list is it's only applicable in a pre-zombie apocalypse world. Because once the zombie apocalypse comes, there's only one appropriate carry revolver. And that revolver is the Colt Python. And you might ask yourself, why the Colt Python? Well, because Rick mother Grimes, bitch. That's why.